Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. It's been a busy week as growers are doing some dust storm cleanup, replanting the corn that got buried, replanting the beans that got cut off. A lot of residue to deal with, especially at the end of the fields. Most of it was getting burnt, but in a few cases, farmers broke out the round balers and rolled up these corn stalks for bedding. Now that's making lemonade out of lemons. Gotta love the farmer's ingenuity. These cool temps have kept both corn and especially beans at more of an idle. Growers are saying things that, you know, gosh, this stuff hasn't changed in five days. Well, we think in days, but our crop thinks in GDUs. In a crop life, it's been more like five hours instead of five days. This slow warm-up has slowed the soil biology, making nutrients harder to come by. We're seeing some pretty impressive visuals in our planter fertility plots that are supplying that fertility to the plant without waiting for the soil to warm up. We are seeing and getting some calls on uniformity problems in a few fields. A lot of the corn locally here anyway is transitioning from the seed roots to the true crown roots. If root development has progressed like it should, this handoff is seamless. But if anything has interrupted good crown root development, now is when the corn's going to show it. We give it the name the ugly corn syndrome. Now is when wheel track compaction, sidewall smearing, herbicide carryover, they all start to show up from the road. The plants not affected are starting to pick up rapid growth and they make the slow ones more visible. Some of these fields were uniform when the seed emerged and they were living off the seed roots. But now as the transition starting to take place, we're seeing this unevenness show up. Now wheel track compaction and sidewall smearing, they're pretty easy to spot when you're doing a field visit. Herbicide carryover, that takes a little more investigative work to figure that out. When looking at a uniform corn stand and trying to measure, be sure to look at collar stage as well as height. In these cool growing conditions, spike down plants tend to be a little shorter, but they're usually the same leaf collar. When we talk about yield loss due to unif ununiform stands, it happens in two ways. Early in the plant's life, let's say emergence through V7, V8, Corn roots need to be the same age when the root systems cross other plants in the row. Late germinating plants will be able to sense stress when they cross older plants and in turn they'll start dialing back their yield. In our stress plots, even if you remove that older plant later, the stress will have already been done and affect the ear size. This is why we want as many as possible to emerge within a 48-hour window of each other. The second place later plants give up yield is when they're being shaded out by the older plants, not being able to capture sunlight because of the shading of the taller plant. It's pretty true if the plant is one collar behind its neighbor, it'll only put on about a half an ear. If it's more than a collar behind, it's probably not going to produce a harvestable ear. Going on service calls where growers saw even emergence, but now some of the corn claiming is you know, as much as two collars behind. Inspection of these fields actually shows the corn is the same leaf collar. Just some plants are growing faster than others. Most of these situations are an aftermath of rootless corn syndrome, where the crown roots were delayed mainly due to dry soil. The crown root will not develop in air 
let's say like in an open slot, or in dry soil. These plants are waiting for moisture to develop the crown roots while doing all their growing off of the seed roots. Last week's rain solved a lot of issues. The moisture allowed the crown roots to start developing and get this corn back on track. Now it can't speed up and catch up to the bigger plants, but at the same time it can get back on track and end up in the same maturity range when we go to pollination and black layer. While the corn is shorter, it is the same age, and little damage has been done to yield. Now this will be noticeable this fall when you go out there because there will be different heights on the ear. It won't be that picket fence stand photocopied ear count. You'll see the ear height change and this will be due to the first nodes in this plant are going to be shorter. Most of this problem goes back to not firming the soil enough with the closing wheels to keep the soil moisture from getting away. One of the common threads I've seen as I investigate these fields is where we used a spoke closing wheel made for no-till but used in tilled soils. The spoke closing wheels don't firm soil like the cast on the rubber tires. As the soil warms up, the soil biology will kick in and that's when we will see the carbon penalty kick in. Fields that were green on Sunday will show yellowing on Wednesday. Now this is a little different than the handoff issue I just talked about, which the corn can be the same color, but at different heights. In the carbon penalty, the corn can all be the same size, but you see variations of color from pale green to yellow. This is the time of year when you can evaluate how well you've done paying the carbon penalty. If you do it right, the corn will stay green and roll on into rapid growth stage with no hitches. There are many things that affect the carbon penalty, all related to residue. Now, where is your residue? On top? Buried in the ground? How uniform is your residue? Did your combine do a good job of spreading that residue? The second thing is how you manage your early season fertility to bypass the carbon penalty. Carbon penalty affects most nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, zinc, and so on. Planter applied fertility is the most efficient way to manage the carbon penalty. Corn on corn, of course, carries some of the highest carbon penalty. Soybeans, even, at V3 or smaller, are going to get caught in the carbon penalty as well. You'll see color variations across the field, and the beans tend to lock up for two weeks sometimes. Now once they get beyond V3, they'll make their own nitrogen and they'll come out of it. But the problem is they need nitrogen to grow to get beyond V3, and they're caught in a carbon penalty in the uh, meantime, so they're kind of stalled out. When you stack crown root issues on corn with carbon penalty, you get some real ugly corn. These tough fields will be dinged in yield. If you're side dressing these fields, I would go sooner than later. Now the corn roots will have to get to the nitrogen band before they can do anything with it, but the sooner it's out there, the quicker that can happen. Growers have asked, this week about why dropping V3 corn to get it to come out of the carbon penalty quicker. Now this is tricky. You don't want to splash nitrogen into the world on this small corn. So if you're going early, you're going to have to go slow. As I mentioned earlier in podcast, we're seeing more herbicide carryover than I'd expected. We're seeing it both in corn and beans. Now that we're entering into the ugly corn stage, more of this is coming to light. Most of these fields have few options. Replanting will just see the same symptoms in the replant, and most of the post treatments are already on, preventing us from switching to a different crop. We're in it for the long haul in these fields, hoping they'll turn around sooner than later. 
The dry weather last summer, followed by the dry weather this fall and spring, are what's driving this issue. Nitrate season is in full bore. The nitrates to this point look pretty good. It's stacking up to be a nitrogen friendly year, locally here anyway in most cases. We're just starting to get nitrate samples in from some of the wetter areas and they are starting to show the loss of some nitrogen. I would say 8 out of 10 fields coming in, the guys are bumping their yield goals. This would suggest that they are seeing what I'm seeing out there, some really amazing corn stands. You need to start with amazing stands to achieve amazing stands. Cutworm are still cutting out there, so let's not forget them. Stay on top of that. We can clean them up pretty quick. Plot crews are about finished with the 2025 planting season. We planted our last round of soybeans uh, in our planting date, row spacing, population plots here at the Corn College campus today. I planted the last round of a 4-6 maturity bean today that we have planted March 14th, April 14th, May 14th, and now here at the end of May. These are all side by side, so you'll be able to evaluate them when you come to the Corn Soybean College. Our soil testing crews are battling rain, wind, and dust storms to get your summer sampling done. So if you haven't got your orders turned in, let's get that done. There'll be no boots in the field next week. The Canadian pest teams are dealing with a pretty big breakout of walleye and smallmouth bass. So Zach and I are going to go up there and help them out. Isaac and the team here will keep the side dress maps coming to you and take care of any service calls that need to be tended to. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.